Back in 2011, Tatler's longtime society photographer, Hugo Bernand, landed what he calls the gig of the century, photographing Prince William and Catherine Middleton's wedding as the official royal wedding photographer on the day. Ahead of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's forthcoming nuptials, he recounts the biggest day of his career. Q. What was it like getting the call asking you to photograph Catherine and William's wedding? I was extremely lucky to have previously photographed the wedding of the Prince of Wales to Camilla Parker Bowles, which led to a natural and gentle process of meetings and discussions about how and who might take the pictures for Prince William and Catherine, and a slow realization that it was me who was going to do the job. There was no clearly defined come on down moment. Q. How long did your preparations take around three weeks in advance of the wedding? I knew we would be taking the photographs. Then, for almost three days the throne room at Buckingham Palace became our home to prepare for the occasion, which is a rare claim and a privilege never to be forgotten. Q. What were your biggest fears on the day we were very prepared, and had done a second-by-second -second stopwatch dress rehearsal of the entire day? Not only did we have spare parts for every piece of equipment, we also had spares for the spares so, come the day, we were more excited than fearful. The atmosphere among my team and I was more along the lines of bring it on. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge release new Prince Louis photos looking from behind a balcony down the mall filled with celebrating well-wishers was quite a moment. I pinched myself just to make sure it was for real Q. How big was your team in total? There were six of us in the core team and everyone had a very specific role, including my mother, the photographer Erzy Bernand, who was in charge of keeping the bridesmaids and pageboys content. Q. How did you get all the pageboys and flower girls to sit so still? I always had bribery in mind. We had bowls of jelly beans and other sweets as rewards. Interestingly, all the jelly beans disappeared, although I'm not convinced it was only the little people who ate them. Meghan Markle's father will walk her down the eel queue. What were the biggest hurdles on the day knowing that there was an rough fly past on its way towards us? We had a very strict schedule with minimal margin for timing slip-ups. That kept the adrenaline flowing, for sure. Meghan Markle's father will walk her down the eel queue. Did you meet any corgis? I cannot remember if we met any corgis that day, but the general rule is that if you see a corgi, you know that Her Majesty is only a few steps away. Once, at Windsor Castle, I was scrabbling around on the floor, trying to plug a light into a socket under a chair when the cold wet nose of a corgi kindly offered me some assistance. Q. What was the highlight of the day looking from behind a balcony down the mall filled with celebrating well-wishers was quite a moment. I pinched myself just to make sure it was for real. Q. How quickly did you need to turn around the photos? The images were edited and prepared inside the throne room, and were ready for release before we left Buckingham Palace. Q. What was your buzzword to make everyone smile in the photos? I'm not sure I can give away my trade secrets. However, being a chatterbox helps, as it keeps the people you are photographing engaged, and if you are talking it stops them talking which is essential, so I guess I charted a lot that day. Q. What was your favorite photo taken? The very last picture we took was of Prince William and Catherine sitting on the steps to the throne, with all the page boys and bridesmaids tumbled around them. There is a spontaneity to this image. We took it in three minutes flat, and I love that every expression, movement, and position is natural. There was no time for direction, and everyone in that image contributed to something very special. When we left the palace a few hours later we passed a winter hall to painting of Queen Victoria, Prince Albert and their children. It looked remarkably similar to the image we'd just taken, and it felt very special to have taken a contemporary image, influenced subliminally by a classical masterpiece, that could become a historical document. Q. How did photographing the royal wedding impact your career in many ways, but the biggest and most rewarding aspect has been my ability to turn my camera towards helping other people. I have since raised money through photography for a number of charities, mainly children's charities and wildlife conservation projects, and no matter how big or small the project, it is a complete and utter joy to be able to give back. A current project includes the sale of photographs to raise money for the much-needed heart transplant of a schoolgirl. Never did I imagine I could contribute to something like this, and it has been made possible to be surprisingly effective thanks to the high profile given to me by the Commission of Photographing the Gig of the Century. To contact Hugo Bernard Photography please visit hugophoto.com or call 44 207